Hello, I'm Atsuba Judge. Now, we've been talking all week about, almost all week about the rapture. And I said, there's a lot of misconception people have about it. And, and you wonder, where, where did they get this thing from? You know, just the imagination of men. People have made movies, and people just disappearing anyhow, and ca calamity, chaos everywhere. And, and funny enough, we even, even as preachers, many of us have, have locked that in our minds and have, when we teach, that's what we emphasize on. We emphasize on those things, those images formed in our minds without looking at scriptures. And I, like I said, these things were written in scriptures already. There is a pattern and it's not going to be different. At, at, at least you know that it's not going to, the way we'll be taken up is not going to be different from the way Jesus was taken up. Is the rapture going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. Surely it's going to happen. And listen, it's not far from now. Say, so how do you know it's not far from now? Oh, see, that's, that's the reason why this period I'm going to be talking to you about these things that are very, very important. You see, one of the things that we miss out many times when we talk about end time is the church itself. There are still arguments. Is the church going to be taken before the rapture? Is the rapture going to happen before the Antichrist comes? Or is it going to be during the tribulation? Or is it going to be after the tribulation? Now, you see, those arguments, when you listen to those arguments, do you know what people argue? They argue scriptures. Oh, this scripture said this, this scripture said this, this scripture said this, this scripture said this. Now, when I see people arguing and just quoting scriptures, I call it foolishness. You know why I call it foolishness? They're wasting their time. The person who knows the truth is not dead. He's alive. Who's, not, who's asking him? <laughs> Praise God. Somebody wrote a book. And you pick up those, that book. And you're having an argument about what he said. The person is still alive. Nobody thinks about taking up his phone to call the person. So send him an email and say, please, in your book, you said this. We are, we are having an argument right here that this is what you mean. Please, can you tell us what you mean? And then the author of the book will say, this is what I meant. Because he knew what was in his heart. Now, that's exactly what Jesus said, you know, to, to, to the Jews. He says, you search the scriptures because in the scriptures you think you have eternal life. Meanwhile, these scriptures testify of me, but you will not come to me so that you will have life. So they argue scriptures and then they don't go to Jesus. Argument of the scriptures never gives life. Actually, the Bible says the letter kills. When he says the letter, let me make it clear. The scriptures, the Bible kills. So reading the Bible kills. Because when you just pick it up and you want to read, it will kill you. How will it kill you? It will confuse you. It is the spirit that quickens. So if you take the Bible without the spirit, you will die. It will kill you. Take the Bible, but it is the spirit of God that's going to make it alive in your heart. So what are you supposed to focus on? The spirit of God. And there's no way you will know the spirit of God without knowing the voice of God. Now you see, that's why yesterday I talked to you about the disciples of Jesus Christ. They were with Jesus. They ate with him. They played with him. But many of the disciples, well, not many, let me not say many, some of the disciples, the 11 now, still didn't know him. That's why Mary Magdalene will hear his voice and she will respond, Rabboni, to a stranger. You understand what I'm saying? John will see a stranger standing there and he will say, do something. And he will look at him and say, Peter, here's the one. Now that was the reason, Thomas, you remember Thomas? That was the reason Thomas said, lie, lie, except I see the hole in his hands and the wound at his side. Why do you think Thomas, you know, that's why we call him doubting Thomas. But why do you think he was doubting? The stories were too much for him to, 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 to grab. I mean, I mean, uh, John saying he saw him, and so he described what he saw. And, and Ma Mary Magdalene saw him, and she described what she saw. And then and, and Thomas said, you guys, you're not serious. 
John, you say you saw him. Matt and Mary, you say you saw him. And you people are describing different kind of people. You are not serious. So, so they say, well, you guys say he's risen from there. I don't have a problem with it. But until I see that he is the real person. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's when I'll believe you guys. Because he hadn't seen him. Now that's why Jesus appeared when he was there. And Jesus said, come. See the holes. Put your hand in my side. And Thomas knew that man. That's why I say, my Lord and my God. What am I telling you? Jesus never expected them to know him physically anymore. They are now to know him by revelation. And how do you know him by revelation? When your heart is open to hear his voice. Now this is what is very important for the church right now. You as a believer, do you know Jesus? I'm not talking about what your pastor have told you. I'm not talking about what the Bible have said. I'm talking about you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Today, the world is celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. But I ask you that question. Do you know his voice? Have you heard him talk to you? Now, I'm not talking about a voice. Okay, holy, oh, yes, Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. There is, there is the voice that comes in our hearts. We hear it all the time. We'll hear him all the time. Now, he speaks in different ways. But the constant one that you hear every morning when you wake up as a child of God is the one that inside your heart. Now, that's what most, most times, even God's children think they are thinking. But it's the, you see, when you don't recognize and acknowledge him, you, you won't see the prosperity of his voice in your life. Now, let me ask you another question. Hearing the voice of God is one thing. And letting that voice teach you about Jesus is the most important thing. There are lots of pastors, lots of preachers, they don't know Jesus. They know about him, they preach him, they do miracles in his name, but they don't know him. Jesus said something in, in, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, I will, I'm open, I will come in. And I will sup with him. What's Jesus saying? This is big. What does it mean for Jesus to sup with you? Think he's going to come and eat food with you? No, sir. Jesus is going to come and open himself up to you. And that's when you will begin to know him. And what did he say to those people? The one who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my father's throne, even as I overcame and I'm seated with him. What's he saying? The one who overcomes what? The one who overcomes the world to know me. He will sit with me on my father's tree. Listen, listen. The most important thing you should be thinking about right now is how much you know Jesus. That's the most important thing. You don't be concerned about whether the Antichrist is coming, one world government. The most important thing right now, do you know Jesus Christ. I want you to think about it. And if you need any kind of help, call our number. We're ready to pray with you. We're ready to, to, to counsel you and, and help you the way we can. This is very important. I'm going to continue next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.